everyone. Hi, welcome to the content planning webinar, uh, the second webinar of 2016 uh, regarding blogging and how to plan proper content for your blog posts. Um, this means that you're going to be writing with a purpose in mind to educate your your um, users, your readers, and to get more uh, clients to your website because the content that you're writing about is what people are going to be wanting to look for when it comes to trying to find you. Um, I'm Tracy, Tracy Adams. I'm your success coordinator here at Brandco. I'm a blogger. I call myself a client whisperer and I'm an inbound marketer. Inbound marketing is um, all about making things available to people to bring them into your website to take them from being visitors or strangers into being customers. So um, I do these webinars every week. I have one scheduled for every week until the end of March and I hope everybody is scheduled uh, for doing those and I appreciate everyone for showing up for this webinar for today. So I'm going to start off with our first poll. And the first poll is do you feel like your content is working to make your business successful? Um, your answer choices are I do, unfortunately no, or I don't blog. Um, so far, I'm getting about 50% of the votes so far. Uh, we still got about half people still needed to come through. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. As of right now, about 50% people say that unfortunately no, they don't feel like their content is working to make their business successful. 42% uh, say that they don't blog, and 8% are saying that they're getting success from their blog posts. So the next question is, um, the next section is how to go through this and um, how to get success from your blogging that you do um, and the content that you're writing. The whole purpose of all of this is search engine optimization, and a lot of us throw the word around or the term SEO and don't really know how to obtain it and this webinar will cover a lot of that. What is SEO? SEO is the process of improving your website so that it attracts more visitors from search engines. Um, when it comes to SEO, there are little spiders that these search engines like Google and Bing and Yahoo just send out and they crawl around on your content to find out what all is in there. So if you have these blog posts that are nothing but or nothing but photos, nothing but a video, you're not going to get SEO off that post because there's no actual content in there for these little players to crawl on it, to read, to decide whether or not they need to um, give us a suggestion for someone that's made a question in um, a search engine. So it's important for us to have a strategy around how to get search engine optimization for our website. I apologize. Uh, it sounds like everybody's having an issue with my audio. Is it getting any better? Unfortunately, I don't really have any real control over it. So up next will be our SEO strategy that we need to work around um, what we need to do in order to earn this SEO. Um, the first thing would be for us to do search, uh, keyword research. Now, in order for us to do keyword research, we need to know what actual keywords are. If you know what a keyword is, then um, you probably are already focusing on it in your website. Um, so do you have a list of primary keywords that you focus on currently for your website? All right, currently we have around 42% of people that say yes, they do have a list of keywords that they are using, and 58% say that they do not. So that's one of the main things, is to have uh, specific keywords that you're trying to hit within your search engine uh, optimization whenever you're writing this content. I hope that my audio has improved. I've come off of Wi-Fi and onto our landline, so I'm hoping that um, has given something better for you to listen to. Um, if not, please let me know. Um, so to continue on, 
We need to know what a keyword is. Now, a keyword is what's typed into a search engine for things to be found for. So um, there are topics that searchers are trying to learn more about. And you need to know what people are trying to find you for and what um, actual you know, keywords people are putting in to find you and what can your niche be that you can try to make a significant impact on as far as keywords. Now, some keywords have very high rates of um, search and make it harder for you to be able to make an impact on. But there are some that aren't searched as often that you can find yourself, you know, being the leader of the pack for. So, when it comes to keyword research, there is a list of steps that you really should go through. And first would be what make a list of the keywords that your client would search for. So, in, in other words, think like your client. If you think that um, your client was searching for homes for families within this zip code, then maybe you should start writing blog posts and blog content about that zip code and written in that kind of way. So thinking about your client is probably one of the first things that I have to say that would definitely make a big impact. Now, I know that those of us, like when I write, I, I write for me to read. And I need to think more about what my clients would actually want to read and how they would put that into a search engine to try and find it. Number two would be to expand that list by searching for web, searching the web for alternatives. So if you're, you've started thinking like your client, now you have to think of all the different ways that that one client could put that same thing in. So to broaden your keyword list, you can search the internet. And by searching, you're going to find a lot more options. So type one of your keywords in the search and see what the results are and see what other information you're going to be able to get off of that. So an example, if I was typing in to Google, buying home in. Now, I'm located in Orlando, so of course it's going to give me some examples based off of my location because Google even knows where we are. Um, it tells me like, oh, a home in Florida, Orlando, foreclosure, another state. So those are options and that broadened my category for if I was just going to use buying a home. Then I can now use buying a home in and make it more long tail and adding more to it to make it a little bit more specified. So our next section for keyword research would be to determine which keywords people are using to find your site currently. Now, last week we did talk about Google Analytics. And Google Analytics is how you would find that information in order to know like what keywords you are being found for currently. And let me go over to Google Analytics. And this is an organic search traffic. And it's going to tell us where we are getting uh, what keywords people are using in order to find our current website. So we're utilizing the website uh, Loudoun County, Loudoun County Homes com, I believe. And if you wanted to find specifically what keywords you're being found for in organic searches, you can go under Acquisition, Campaigns, and then Organic Keywords. You can change like your span of time in which it's going to give you your results for. You can do day, week, or month. I've done months so we can get more onto the page. And you can see that he's being found for Ashburn, Virginia, Homes for Sale in Sterling, VA, Countryside, comma, Keller Williams, um, Homes for Sale, Leesburg, VA, Homes in Luckett, VA, uh, Keller, Kirkpatrick. Um, there's a lot of different choices in here that he's being found for currently. And this is all within the last month as far as how his search is go. Now, if he's being found for these already, it's probably a good opportunity for him to go through and add maybe some content to his site that uses these terms in it. Or, you know, write an article about Ashburn, Virginia, and some or some event that's happening inside of Ashburn, Virginia that you know, the person that was searching for it would have also found that content as well, and eventually he would have found, been a, um, an expert in that area. 
So going back to our slides and our keyword research. Decide which keywords you have the op best opportunity to rank for. Now, this is going to have a lot to do with how much competition you have. Believe it or not, whenever you are going more hyper-local, you are increasing your ability to be able to make an impact in your search engine optimization. Now, everybody and their mom is probably utilizing is probably utilizing um, specifically uh, that large city area. Like if someone was to try to um, make an impact for Orlando specifically, they're going to have a lot of competition. So ranking for Orlando is going to be a lot more difficult than it would be for you to, um, to be able to uh, you know, make an impact for a small portion of it, like a zip code or um, a specific uh, subdivision. That's why whenever we're talking to you, like if I've looked through your blog and I've given you suggest suggestions, I've probably mentioned that you probably would really benefit from community pages. Community pages are like a big to-do when it comes to looking up this information. Now, there's one way to find out more information and how things are being searched in the, in the search engines, and that's through um, a little guy called Google Trends. Google Trends will give you um, some great opportunities in order to impact search engines. Um, so I have that pulled up as well, so let's go take a look at that. All right, so this is Google Trends, and you can literally get to it from just Googling Google Trends. Inside here, you're able to put in separate keywords or topics and compare them. So if, um, you know, most of us in here are all uh, affiliated with Keller Williams. So if we're going to put in Keller Williams versus Keller Williams Family Reunion, which we're all going to be at next month, right? And click Enter. It's going to compare the two and tell us which is searched for, how often, um, and then give us other op other opportunities. So Keller Williams Family Reunion has like nothing, apparently. Most people probably say KWFR. Um, so if we looked at Keller Williams, if we go down here, we can find out like where it's most often searched for, mostly in the U.S., um, and go down to see related searches for this as well. So related topics would be real estate company or Keller Williams the musician. And then it gives you um, some different queries that people have put into search engines. So these are things, essentially, are keywords that people are putting into the search engines to try and find Keller Williams. And um, you can see what the top ones are and what's on the rise to see what things are making and uh, are coming to be new on the scene. So if you're trying to find things that people are searching for, and to try to you know make an impact on them, or the best way to write out a phrase or um, you know some suggestions and things like this, this is another way to go about it. Google Trends is a, a new toy that I've been playing with, with myself. Um, put it this way: I do a nonprofit organization, and um, we work very closely with people that make costumes. And there's another term for people that make costumes and wear them. They're called cosplayers. I'm not a big fan of the term, but it's highly searched when it comes to comparing it to customer. There's a big difference. Well, actually, costumer is used more often now. That's great. And you have to look at like the kind of areas that you would impact and things like that, too. So it's really nice to have these kind of options that we can play with when it comes to um, deciding where we can make our impact inside of the search engines. So is your blog content hyperlocal? Do you focus on a small subdivision or a small town uh, or a group of small towns? Or do you focus on the big city or the entire state? Um, if it if your 
going over like and trying to get everything it's probably showing and being a little bit more difficult for you um, whenever you're doing hyper local you're able to focus on that small area and give people what's going on a little bit a little bit easier so once we hit at least 50 percent on the poll I'll go ahead and close it we've got a, at least one more person if they could answer we would close that for this um, currently we've got 43 percent yes 13% no, 33% is I don't blog. Hopefully you're going to start blogging now that you're doing these webinars. If not, please get in contact with me and let's talk about what's holding you up, okay? And 7% are still asking what is hyperlocal. All right, so hyperlocal is specifically focusing on a small area versus a big area. And the best way to look at it is you probably don't know anything about these small small towns and subdivisions here in Orlando, but to compare the two, Baldwin Park is a very small, very wealthy um, subdivision within Orlando. It's in the, the northern area of Orlando. Indifference, if I was doing a search called Orlando Homes for Sale, instead of Baldwin Park Homes for Sale, like if I was focusing on Orlando versus Baldwin Park in my blog post, I've got a difference of, you know, around 22 million between the two as far as my competition. So Orlando Homes for Sale is going to give me 24 million results, but Baldwin Park Homes for Sale is only going to give me 2 million results. That's a big difference. It's a lot less people you're going to have to uh, fight against in order for people to actually see your content. Now, Homes for, like just Orlando or just, you know, insert community homes for sale is not the best way to try to impact um, your search engine optimization. There's always more that you can add to it to make it a little bit more um, specific. And like I said, you know, a general keyword such as homes for sale can have a large amount of competition. So just homes for sale, you can find uh, over 1 billion results. So the word homes for sale is very, very, very popular. But if you were to search best neighborhoods in Orlando for families, it, you're using a long tail uh, keyword at that point and it gives you a lot less competition. And you're specifically helping the people that you're trying to um, target then. If you're trying to sell you know, single family homes that are meant, that are like in great um, family neighborhoods. Um, I know that Avito recently was um, voted one of the top neighborhoods in Florida for um, for families. So if you were selling in Oviedo, then you know you probably should start gearing a lot of your content towards families and buying homes for families. So let's go back to our SEO strategy. So we have our keywords that we have an idea on at this point after doing all the research that we just did. Now, it doesn't mean you need just one keyword. You can have hundreds of keywords, as long as they're focused. So now you're going to create content around your keywords. And you're going to do this with your search engines in mind. Now, search engines are a lot smarter than we think they are. Um, they think of what your actual intent was and what you're actually looking for by way of natural language. Um, so inside your content, you don't necessarily have to utilize the same phrasing over and over and over in order to make an impact inside of a search engine. They're actually onto people that do that sort of thing, and that's why search engines actually know to be aware of the fact that, you know, we don't talk like that. Are you currently utilizing the SEO Yoast plugin inside of your piggyback blog if if you're blogging. Oh, well, I didn't lay anybody the answer. Dang it. Um, if you are, go ahead and mark. Uh, let me know by saying yes or no. Um, if you are utilizing the SEO Yoast um, plugin, you need to know a couple of things. Like when I just said that SEO and search engines know a lot more as far as um, your natural language and it's going to help utilize that, just know that SEO Yoast is a guide, not a law to live by. Your 
the SEO Yoast plugin, if you are utilizing it inside of your piggyback blog, you'll know that it asks for a specific focus keyword for your blog post. And um, it's going to look for that specific keyword throughout all your blog posts, meaning in the title, in um, all these specific locations. Meaning it's only looking for that. So if you've used the focus keyword of homes for sale in Baldwin Park, it's looking just for that. You can't change the order saying Baldwin Park homes for sale, but a search engine would know that. So when it comes to utilizing that specific uh, plugin, just know that it's a guide. So be careful. Um, let it guide you, but don't let it be the law. And using that plugin is how we optimize around a keyword, and it's kind of a guide to help you through that. This is the section here that shows like what your SEO Yoast plugin looks like inside of your piggyback blog. You type in your focus keyword, um, and it looks for it in all these specific locations. It looks in your title, it looks in your URL, it looks in your content, in your SEO title, your meta description, and your image alt tags. Now, your SEO title and your meta description are two very specific things that even a year ago, from a year ago, I didn't even know what they were. SEO title is specifically the title that you see whenever you are searching the, um, the internet and trying to find something and you're getting that result and you're seeing um, like the title and you're seeing the content underneath it. They can actually set that information to show a specific way and you're able to do it through this SEO Yoast plugin. So you can see in this area that says snippet preview, that's how it would display inside of the search engine if someone got your website as a result. It's kind of your way, the meta description at least, it's kind of your way to try to encourage someone to click on your blog post. Now, like I said a few minutes ago, do not try to just copy and paste and write over and over and over um, your keywords. Generally speaking, if you have a long keyword list and require many keywords in your text, most search engines will rank your web page low. So you want to be careful of how many keywords you decide to take on inside of a single blog post. Just think and write naturally and you know test what you're writing. Now, in order to test it, it would be a matter of seeing if someone has actually read your blog post, whether or not they stayed on it for a certain amount of time. Um, whether or not the keywords that you've gotten in your list have uh, actually had an impact inside of search engines and you would check all that inside of your um, search engine, your actual Google Analytics. All right, so after we have written our post and our post revolves around this long tail keyword that we've created, we're going to make sure that we include um, relevant links within the content. This shows that we've researched our information, that we know what we're talking about, we're, we feel safe enough to refer the information out to someone else, and um, I, it's, it's a great, great way to include more information into your blog post. So linking to relevant, reliable sources builds your trustworthiness of your website. And it's really easy to do. Um, it's, and it helps promote, actually, sorry, I've skipped a, skipped a slide. There we go. Include relevant internal links. These links will help promote your users to dive deeper into your website's content. Now, you can use your internal links, meaning that if you've written about a blog post that goes into um, something a little bit more specifically than you want to, in the blog post that you're writing at that moment, like if I'm talking about, um, I'm just going to keep using Baldwin Park. Um, if I talk about Baldwin Park, but then I mentioned somewhere in there that they have this really great dog park that I just happened to have written a blog post about last month because I visited it with my two dogs. I can highlight that content and then link to that other blog post so someone can go to it if they want to find out more information. On that actual blog post, I could have also linked out to another, you know, could have linked out to Yelp or something that also had some great reviews and that was the reason why I went to it. So letting people have the opportunity to see like your thought process and how you went through it and learned this information, then it helps them 
relate to you and trust you more. If you're wanting to create a link or a hyperlink inside of your website, it's really quick and easy. So if you're if your link if you're trying to link information to your actual words that you've written, so um, this is what I'm trying to link. What you do is you highlight it with your mouse, click the chain link button, and you can paste in your URL or type it in there. And if someone, if you're trying to get someone to go to something that is outside of your website, you would click this little checkbox and it would open in another tab so that their website, like your website, remains active on their browser. If you are linking internally, so it's within your blog, you wrote about it last month, um, it's really easy to do this inside of WordPress. There's a link here that says, or link to existing content. If it's closed, it looks like this, and you click it, and it opens up everything that you've written about. It'll let you know what day you wrote it, or if it's a page that you created, the names. You can search if you have a lot of content by now. You can search within it and um, find it a little bit easier than just scrolling up and down. But you can easily just click on it and um, let it go to that page really quickly and easily for your users so that they can dive deeper into your website. All right, third piece as far as trying to optimize an actual blog post is to promote a good user experience. Now, if you've encouraged people to go to your website, then you're going to want to give them what they're looking for. Most websites should have all the important information easy to find. Um, just like Steve Krug said, nothing important should ever be more than two clicks away. So the people that are utilizing um, their neighborhoods, I always recommend having neighborhoods or communities in your menu um, so that it's right there all the time. Now, uh, another great way to have important information there is to have um, great info inside of your um, website sidebar. And I know that my sidebar webinar isn't until like the very end of March, but there's a lot more that you're going to need to like accomplish as far as focusing your blog content before we get to that point. But it's just very important, like if you, if you expect people to come to your website for something very specific, give it to them right away. Um, don't, don't make them go, well, I can't find what I clicked on this for, so I'm leaving. Um, make sure your users can get to it fast, add it to your menu, have a call to action on the home page, add it to the blog sidebar, mention it at the bottom of blog posts. Quick and easy, um, link out to things that make that are important. And then lastly, you're going to want to make sure that your website is is optimized for mobile. So with that as a question, where do you do most of your website search? Do you uh, do it from, from your phone, your desktop, your laptop, a tablet? Um, because it ends up that most of the world these days do their searching from their phone. And, you know, the, some people with Google or iPhones, um, or Android actually, they don't even have to type it in. They'll just talk to them, talk to Siri or, I don't even know what the name is for the Android one, and ask the question and get their answer. So we said 43% said desktop, 19% said laptop, 29% said smartphone, and 10% said tablet. So then you're probably going to be surprised that 80% of internet users own a smartphone. Actually, you're probably not surprised at that part. But that over 50% of searches done for Google in 2015 were actually done on mobile devices. So that would be a combination of smartphones or tablets uh, and things like that. Um, that over 50% of all the searches done last year were done on a mobile device. And it, you're ready for mobile if your website is responsive. So it's important to know whether or not your website is responsive, that it's viewable well inside of uh, these mobile devices these days. 
because everybody's going to end up using them as their search um, primary search device. All right, back to our SEO strategy. I know we've left it for a little bit while we were discussing optimizing our uh, content, but now we're back to promoting your content. Now, I do have another webinar later on this month that is about marketing your website through, or marketing your content through social media. And that's essentially what this is about. You have a community that you've already formed through um, search engines, like, sorry, social media networks like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, Pinterest. Make use of it. Um, they're already interested in what you have to say or they wouldn't have clicked like or follow. So by putting your content there, letting people know what it's about and giving them the opportunity to click to it or that, that you've added new content, it makes it really nice and easy for people to get access to it. A lot of us don't regularly go to a website to find out whether or not they've written something new. We like to be told through social media because kind of, that's kind of the way of the world these days. That's where we get our news. Um, you can even automate the process to um, not even have to go and like log into your own social media networks every day. Um, you can use websites such as Hootsuite, Buffer. Um, we utilize HubSpot here at Brandco. Um, places like Twitter and Facebook will also allow for you to schedule your blog posts so that you can decide what time they pop up without having to use another, another website in order to control it. And then lastly, there's a Jetpack. So if you have a piggyback blog, you've probably already heard me preaching about whether or not you should activate Jetpack and get it going. And I really think you should. It will make things really easy by the fact that whenever you click publish on a blog post, it will automatically send all this information out to the social media networks that you have it, click, have it connected with. So if you're interested in learning more about that, definitely come and joining, join me. Um, for the how to market through social media um, webinar in two, two, three weeks. Okay. So lastly on our SEO strategy would be to earn links to your content. Now this is probably the hardest part and that's why it's the last part. Networking to gain exposure is one of the hardest parts as far as blogging and this is just the best way to like get your exposure out there. If you can't manage to do this, but you've done all the rest, you're going to be in good shape, okay? So don't let the things that I'm telling you today, like, overwhelm you. The big thing here is to make sure that your blog content is going to be focused and that it's going to be focused on content that your people are going to be wanting to find you for or that you're wanting to be found for. So um, once you've become an authority on the topic that you're – deciding to write on, it's easier to find places in which to share your content. Or you can become a, a guest blogger on someone else's posts. Um, you can give someone an opportunity to write on yours. This could also be um, with companies that are outside of our realm. So um, let's say that you have a mortgage company that you work with and you're just a realtor. I don't, I don't know how that really all works, but um, they, if you want to write a blog post for their website and they could write one for yours so that you're cross, crossing um, industries and allowing for more people to see your information and then being able to go to you for that info from then on. So that's what I'm meaning by earning links to your content or um, ex expanding your content and letting more people see it. Uh, by way of doing things like that. And that's mostly all networking and figuring out uh, where your niche can be and where you can um, gain some more exposure. All right, so will your blogging efforts have a new focus now that you have attended this webinar? Um, I'm hoping that nobody answers still won't be blogging because, I mean, these webinars are all about writing blogs. We want to. We want you to to write your content and to um, start, you know, really seeing some success from creating this content on your website. It really does make a difference. Um, like I said, I think last week's webinar, it was 80% of companies that blog regularly see more business. All right, so I see 
that 59% said yes and 41% has said they're going to try. And I think that's a novice thing to say that you are going to try. And um, let me know if I can do anything to assist you. Like, you know, I'm your I'm your partner here. I'm not just I'm I'm my title as the as success coordinator is not about just the success of Branco. It's about the success of you. I, we want to help our clients succeed. So let us help. If you're having trouble coming up with content, we have a 52 blogging subject suggestion form that you're able to fill out. The URL is on the screen. At this location, actually, let me get back. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I wasn't sharing my screen with you anymore. Um, at this uh, at this location, you're able to go and um, find out 52 blogging subjects based on this one community that you put into the form. Now, you can interact with this once you've received it and put in another community or switch it out. Um, it's pretty easy to figure out where that information was put in at so that you can do more than just the 52 if you wanted. But that gives you a, con uh, a topic to touch on for every week of a year. And if you're blogging once a week for a year, you're in great shape. You're going to see a significant impact when it comes to your, to your website. Last question, guys. Is your website responsive? I'm curious if how many people know that, that it is or that it isn't responsive. Um, I've got 37% answered so far, and they're all saying yes. And 8% now say, okay, so we're getting some more answers. That's great. Um, if your website is not responsive, it's, it's, a, it's a rough world out there if your website isn't responsive and you're still blogging and writing content, mostly because um, Mobile friendly is a, a big deal these days. If you are writing content and you don't have a responsive or web, mobile friendly website, your content is being downgraded. And someone that does have responsive uh, a responsive website are being ranked above you. And this came into effect, I believe, March of last year through Google because they noticed the trend and that more and more information is coming in specifically from mobile devices. So if you're not having a, if you don't currently have a mobile ready website or mobile friendly website or a responsive website, let us know. We do offer this for you and we can definitely take your website to the next level so that you are responsive and you're no longer being downgraded in the, in the search engine. All right, so at this time, I'm going to open the floor and answer some of the questions that I have available. So let me get through some of this. Um, all right, does that tell you whether those genetic searches were from the same IP address or person? This was coming from Patrick regarding the um, organic search from Google Analytics. I'm not sure if it shows you whether or not it's coming from the same IP address. I don't think you're going to get that kind of specific information as far as if it's the same person over and over. Now, um, usually if you're utilizing something um, like WordPress, it knows to not pay attention to the people that are logged into your website. So if you visited your website over and over and over, it's not going to take that into effect. Um, I doubt it's going to tell you whether or not it's the same IP address or the same person. And like I've said in previous webinars, I'm, I'm not an expert in any way, shape, or form to Google Analytics. Um, if you tell me to go find something, I'm usually going to go in and Google it and then go and find it. <laughs> I, I, I'm, a learner, I'm a learner whenever it comes to um, knowing whether or not something is necessary for me to know. You know what I mean? Um, so I will answer, I will find out more about that and let you know. Okay, Patrick? Okay, um, Therese earlier said that he uses the, um, that she uses the Piggyback Blogs um, SEO Yoast plugin, but um, they do not post without a green light. And that's what I was saying as far as using it as a guide rather than um, using it as a law. Now, you, 
I say go as far as having a green light, and then sometimes it's going to tell you that your keyword doesn't have as big of an impact um, in your content as you wish it did, or um, I forget what the term is that it use, uses. Um, but be sure that whenever you're writing your content to speak naturally and not try to just throw the keyword in as much times as possible just to make the plugin happy, okay? Um, Adrian asks, what's the right amount of keywords to target for in your keyword list? Now, um, it really depends on how far you want to go with it. Um, for me personally, I have been working on trying to become certified in this um, inbound marketing strategy from HubSpot. And I just finished my assessment and then there's a practicum. And in that practicum, it makes sure that I know how to utilize all the stuff in its, you know, in its CRM and everything. And it asked for me to have 300 keywords in place to start researching. We had uh, 58. And that was, you know, all the different ways we could possibly think to word everything um, at that time. Now, I'd say start out small. Like start with what's big and then build off of those. And then it doesn't seem like there's a lot of keywords. It's just a lot of keywords about specific things. Um, so don't try to overwhelm yourself. Just start slow and start small. And then you're able to see what you're doing a little bit easier. It's easier to test things whenever you start out small and only make small changes as you go. Um, I got a question here. It says, Jetpack posts my content on Facebook, which is great, but I hate the way it posts. The photos are always small, and it puts a paragraph in the copy of post to a snippet. I understand that. Um, there are ways to control this, and I will specifically go over those ways to control um, how Jetpack posts out your information in the webinar where I'm going to go over social media marketing through um, your content. So um, let me let me uh, talk to you about it then, and I'll send you an email that will um, let you know a little bit more. Or we can have a, a scheduled appointment and go over it at that time, okay? Will you send out an invitation to the marketing webinar? I sure will. Um, if you want to go to it, uh, to all the webinars, um, they're all listed on our website. If you go to brandco.com slash blogging dash webinars, then you'll find them all listed there and you can schedule with any of them. So let me just go ahead and send that out to everyone. And back to the questions. Return the screen to the slideshow. I apologize for that, Leah. I realized a little bit later. Um, I missed the link. You can retype the link to the content. Can I have two completely separate blogs on my Branco responsive website? Currently I have one piggyback blog. Can I add another non-piggyback blog on my website? Um, Jennifer, the reason why I would say to be careful with doing that is that if it's a non-piggyback blog that's going to be on your website, it's very likely that you're not having that under your actual domain name. That's the great thing about Piggyback Blog is that it's utilizing your domain name so you're getting search engine optimization for the website that you will want to be found for. Um, now if you're using like blogger.com or um, something like that, then you're actually not ranking your website, you're ranking their website. Um, so that's the one big thing there. If you're utilizing the same content on two different blogs, then you're then you're hurting yourself there too because one is being considered as duplicate content while the other one is being the original. Duplicate content is probably one of the worst things on the website on on the internet because um, it's not going to rank and you've just wasted all your time. And sometimes you'll also get uh, in trouble, I guess you could say, through search engines because your um, you know they know that that content came from another location. So um, let's talk about why you would want to utilize the two blogs and uh, what the one that is the non-piggyback blog is doing for you. Um, I'll send you an email after the webinar and we'll talk about it then, okay? And um, 
I will follow up with anyone that has sent me an email saying they're having an issue getting the 52 subject items to work, and I'll be sure that I can get that information to you, okay? Um, so if anyone has any other additional questions, um, please feel free to send those now. Um, I appreciate everybody for showing up for these webinars. I'll have you know I look forward to doing them all week um, so that I can, I guess, talk nonstop. Um, you know, uh, to, to and not getting responses except for text. But um, I mean, they're nerve-wracking. But I enjoy the fact that people are taking information from these and and putting them into their blogs. If there's ever a time when you want me to see anything that you've written, you can feel free to tag our Brandco um, social media networks. Um, we're at Brandco.com. Um, you can see at the bottom of our page. You can see all the the links that you can get to. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Google+, we're on everywhere you can get. Um, Facebook is facebook.com slash hellobrandco, and it's the same for Twitter, it's also hellobrandco. Um, so tag us in the in any of your blog posts that you're utilizing, and we'd love to share them on our social media network and um, go in and take a look at them and maybe comment on them ourselves, okay? So thanks again for showing up for this webinar, and um, you'll be receiving a recording in just a couple hours. Thanks again. Have a great day.